on your streetcar, um, up through things that you could do if you had a race or rally car that you wanted some better brakes on. Um, so starting down here on kind of the low end of the scale, we've got some examples of some stock brake parts. So um, in the rear, typically you're going to see um, a smaller disc and caliper combo or even uh, a drum brake setup. Uh, where the rear of the car typically needs to do less of the of the braking compared to the front. Um, so if we look at this, you know this is a some of the parts of a drum brake system. So we have our, our drum, so it's just a big steel piece, and inside of that we've got our shoes, and then on the car you would have um, a cylinder and some springs and stuff that when you push on the pedal, these shoes would get pushed out against that drum and slow the car down. Uh, so it's cheap to produce, um, so it's good from that angle. Performance wise, maybe not the best. Uh, you don't have the best heat dissipation through this. And this is kind of a big, pretty big heat sink and these can overheat pretty easily. Um, we've used drum brakes on some of the production class cars where the rules don't allow changing the brakes away from the stock setup. Um, and we actually had issues where the shoes would wear so quickly that you'd have to readjust the brakes because the automatic adjustment sort of feature that most drum brakes now have couldn't keep up with how quickly the, uh, the material on the shoe was wearing. So if you have a car that comes with drum brakes and you want to do some more spirited driving or, or some sort of competitive type driving, you might want to look at upgrading to a disc and caliper setup. So this would be, sort of your low-end Fiesta rear brake. Uh, this is a caliper and a disc off of a Fiesta ST. Um, so that's sort of the higher end model. So they've switched away from the drum brakes, gone to a disc and caliper. Um, so this would be a nice upgrade with, you know, not just the Fiesta, but a lot of cars you'd find, you might be able to uh, go to the, the OEM parts bin and, and find a setup that would relatively easily onto your car uh, without too much work. And then you might even be able to go a step further and look at maybe a slightly larger car. And you could do this with both the front or the back. Uh, so this is a Focus rear caliper. So you can see slightly bigger caliper than the Fiesta ST caliper. Uh, you could pair this with a slightly bigger disc than that. So again, working within the, the OEM Ford parts bin, this isn't gonna be quite as easy a bolt-on solution. Uh, but you could certainly make up some adapters and stuff to make this work. Um, this is actually the caliper that gets used on a Fiesta R2. So there's an adapter bracket that gets welded on the back to make that caliper work. Um, so that's kind of a, a cheap way to upgrade your brakes without going too crazy from a cost perspective. Um, if you've got a car that uh, maybe already comes with brakes that are um, reasonable in size and quality, uh, but you want to do some competitive driving, some rallying, some racing on the track or something, maybe all you do is look at not up upgrading the, the calipers and discs, but maybe you just upgrade the pads. So a lot of times you can do quite a bit for your capability of your brakes just by looking at different pad options. So this is like a, a Fiesta front um, OEM replacement pad, but uh, a much kind of harder, more aggressive compound. It's going to deal with the heat that you generate um, in racing better. Uh, so that's really what you'd want to do is, is look at pad options. Um, the Hawk is a good option. Sometimes they have a lot of OEM application pads um, or other brake pad manufacturers. Look at what they offer for your car specifically. Uh, some cars are going to have better luck finding OEM replacement stuff than others. Uh, but you can check through what they have and depending on the type of driving you can do, then select a pad that's gonna work for you. You know, some of the um, like really race-oriented pads are gonna be a bit miserable on the street because they don't work well when they're cold, but they can handle much higher heat. Um, so maybe you wanna look at something 
that's a little bit more of a, a crossover. So like these are what they use in some of the school cars here uh, because it's a pad that will handle some higher heat, but it also works reasonably well when it's cold, um, which is, tends to be what you want on a, on a more street driven vehicle that maybe you do some track days or something with from time to time. Um, it's tough to tell, but sometimes even just looking at the pads, you can see that the uh, pad compound is more aggressive just by looking at the material it's made out of. Um, so some of the disadvantages of a really aggressive pad compound, yes, it can handle the heat better. It might give kind of better bite and slow the car down better, um, but you might get a lot more dust or um, a lot of disc wear, so you're gonna chew through your, your brake discs. Um, so there's some disadvantages too. And like I said, a lot of times they don't work that well cold as well. Uh, so if we move on to the front brakes, I mentioned earlier that that's a lot of times you're doing more of the work with the front brakes than the rear. So this is pretty typical that you might see on a lot of cars, uh, modern cars, is that the front disc will be ventilated. So it's a bigger disc, it's got these veins in the middle between the two uh, kind of friction surfaces compared to a rear that might just be solid. Obviously some cars will have a vented rear disc as well. Um, but that's a solid disc. So this is going to be able to dissipate more heat because air can flow through the disc, through those veins to uh, cool the assembly down. You can look at a couple examples of a front caliper. Again, you sort of see they're just bigger than the rear calipers. Um, and what that translates into is a bigger piston in that caliper. So as you push on the brakes, that piston is what's actually doing the work, pressing the pads against the uh, disc and slowing you down. Um, and this is another area where you can maybe mix and match stuff that you can find on different models. So standard Fiesta front caliper uh, and Fiesta ST front caliper. So a slightly bigger assembly, slightly bigger piston in the ST caliper. Uh, so this again would be a, a nice cheap way that you could, if you had a Fiesta upgrade from the lower end model brakes up to an ST brake, um, real cheap money, bolt on a fare, and get a little bit better performance from the brakes. Sometimes too you can find, you might find more pad options for an ST caliper where it's kind of a more performance oriented model. And then if you go kind of further in the OEM world, you might start finding something like this. So this is a Focus RS caliper. So. Um, Biggest difference you see here is instead of the sliding caliper, so the way this works is this bracket mounts to the car, and when the put piston pushes on that on this pad, it pulls the whole assembly over on those slide it sliders to uh, kind of grab the disc from both sides. So now this is a, a four piston caliper, so the whole thing is solid, and there's pistons on either side as a crossover pipe for the fluid to go through. So as you push on the brake pedal, brake fluid goes up through this hose into the caliper and pushes all four pistons in on the pads to slow the car down. Uh, so a couple issues with a thing like this, especially for a rally application, obviously you see how big the caliper is. You're not really gonna be able to fit this under a 15 inch wheel. Um, so that's where you start getting into, if you want, brakes that perform really well, especially in a rally application, you might have to start looking outside of OEM stuff um, and into more competition-based parts. Um, so here we've got another example of a four-piston caliper, much smaller overall in size. One thing you would see if you measured the pistons in this caliper and this caliper is they're actually relatively similar in size. Um, one of the things they've done here is try and make this caliper really stiff, they add a lot of material. So the, the body of the caliper is quite big, uh, even though the pistons aren't that much bigger than what's in something like this. So uh, better design, better materials, you can make a smaller package, a lighter package that's just as stiff or stiffer than something like this. Um, and then you can move into something a little higher end where again, it's a four piston caliper, um, but costs more money. Again, you can look at, you know, the, just the design of this to make it as stiff as possible. Um, the materials, 
And also this is a one piece caliper. So this you can see the body of this caliper is held together by four bolts. So that's gonna offer some flex between those two halves. Whereas this is all one machined out of one piece. So it makes the caliper quite a bit stiffer. Um, in your whole braking system, the stiffer everything can be, the better um, the pedal feel and, and, and just the overall performance of the brakes will be. So if you imagine in your braking system, if stuff is flexing, that's sort of lost work as if, and it's not doing what you want it to do, which is slow the car down. Um, and uh, that's another area where you could pretty easily upgrade your OEM stuff. So most cars will come with uh, four flexible brake hoses at each corner of the car. So this allows for the movement of the suspension. And this is a high pressure rated rubber line. So it'll last a long time. It'll work fine for most street cars, but it will flex a little bit as you pre press on the brake pedal. The pressure of the fluid will flex this line out a little bit. So a nice easy upgrade you can make to get a bit, bit of a better pedal feel is just go to uh, like a stainless steel braided brake line. So this is, has a covering on it so you can't actually see the, the line, but um, a lot of cars you can find OEM replacements that just bolt right in or you can buy adapters to make a more generic line like this work. Um, but similar to the brake pads, that's kind of an easy upgrade that you can make. Uh, another thing you can do too is upgrade your fluid. So here we've got a uh, dot four uh, brake fluid. This is kind of like the uh, all season tire of brake fluids. It will get you down the road, it'll stop your car, but it's it's not the highest performing fluid. So you can find better stuff that'll handle, high, handle higher temperatures, have a higher boiling point. So that's another thing you can look into if you want to just sort of upgrade your stock brake system without spending a lot of money. And then the uh, last thing we kind of get into is some of these competition brake discs. Uh, so compared to a stock Fiesta disc, um, this we would use on a Fiesta R2. So just a bigger disc, the overall diameter is bigger. So that's gonna help slow the car down. This is about as big as we can fit under certain 15 inch wheels. Um, and uh, the other thing you can see is the disc is wider and also, it might be a little bit hard to see, but the veins are shaped differently. Um, so the vein design can help with cooling the disc. Um, and then the other thing too is that some of these competition discs, that they're designed to not only help cool the disc better, but keep the temperature of the disc more stable. So when you start getting part of the disc is much hotter than others, or you know the outer part of the disc cools faster, you'll start to get cracking in the disc and your disc can crack. And I think this one being used, if you looked hard enough, you'd probably find some cracks that have started. Uh, like right there. So that's another thing you look for in uh, some of these competition type discs is the work they do to, in the design to keep them um, thermally stable. And then this is sort of a upgrade on this disc. So again, it's just a little bit bigger it's wider, um, again, different vein design. And also obviously this is designed to be a two-piece rotor. So this is all integrated, um, the mounting and the disc itself, whereas this would be two-piece. So you've got your disc and then you've got your mounting bell that would uh, bolt to that to hold it together. And the advantage of the, the bolted solution is A, this is quite a bit lighter than the steel that you'd need to make the brake disc out of, but also it allows for some some movement where those mount, mounting points are. So as the disc heats up and cools down, it's less likely to crack because it's got some give between the bell and the disc itself. Uh, and this is actually how these would mount. So this isn't a totally straight bolted solution. It uses this little bobbin that uh, slots into the disc. So that slots into the disc and when that mounts, it allows for a bit of movement in and out. So that again, as that disc heats up and cools down, um, it's less likely to crack because it's got some, some play there. Um, there's quite a bit more you can do with pedals and master cylinders and stuff like that and lines within the car. But I think for today, we're just gonna stick to what's out of the wheels, the discs and the calipers.